is very important. That's something that I've always treasured in my life. Family is supposed to stick together. I mean, we were all born, we're all blood, uh, blood related. It's not like we're just gonna go our separate ways. I mean, we're all here to bring each other happiness. If something's going on, your family and members are supposed to be the first person you call. They're supposed to be the ease to your pain. And having a family, I want to be a part of something. I've never been adopted, so. So Kenny's a kick. He is a, just a ton of fun. Um, and he's always, he's just, he's funny. So who wrote that on your, uh, your hood? Yeah, I love it. Oh, it's a friend of mine. She was like, she, I had extra spray paint. So she's like, yeah, you know what? I'll decorate it a little bit. So she dared me to keep it on. So I kept it on. He really loves cars. I got bad suspension. Um, but he wants to make a difference. He really wants to speak out on behalf of um, children that have been uh, in the foster care system. That's a tough question. He's a very complicated young man. He started out extremely angry, and now he's turned into quite, quite a sensitive and kind young man. He's got a strong side to him that allows him to not just point and click, but he'll fight to get where he wants to be. He'll fight to keep those people he cares about. A very caring young man um, who wanted to be there and still wants to be there for his younger siblings. He's the oldest now. He's very loving, funny. Um, very resilient. He's been through a lot, um, but the things that I've seen him do from the last time I saw him to now is just amazing. I think his personality is, he has a good sense of humor, and he's needed it, and he likes a good joke. He likes to have fun. He has a good personality. He's lost his anger or at least hidden it, so he's doing much, much better now than he was before. Last night, Shadow jumped on me this morning. So that was my morning wake up talk. Last time I was here, I had a doctor come over to watch a movie because he used to do it a lot. And he would just sit on the couch and fall asleep. And when the movie's over, he'll wake up and go, That was a good movie just because he needed a little rest. And my dad knew it because of all the stress of being a doctor. But this place is so spiritual that it just calms you down. I love this place so much. It was very hard for me to witness my family move on and be adopted. And yet I'm still the only one that has yet to be adopted. So yeah, it was kind of like, all right, where do I fit in? So I've always told myself I'm like the black sheep because I really am the black sheep. I don't really feel like I've really belonged anywhere or that nobody's honestly really cared. So I was just like, okay, I guess I'm just gonna keep doing me. If people don't like me for who I am, I guess that's still what I call a their problem. 
that I've always wanted to try to be the person that they wanted me to be, but that'll be more like pretending. And that's not really what I wanted to do. I mean, yeah, I've had anger issues and problems, but I guess that deep down, I guess really inside, I really did want to be adopted. Watching all of them just kind of kept dragging me down. No, Panda, you can't go for a ride. <laughs> Kenny's story is not a very happy story. When I first met Kenny as his casa, I don't think he weighed 50 pounds. He was undernourished and not loved. He'd been abandoned by his mother emotionally, and he'd been abused, horribly, horribly abused. But when, when I met him, he just was, he acted so happy I don't think he really quite understood what a casa was, but he was just so happy to have somebody in his life that gave a darn about him. Oh, there it is. All right. I was looking for that. He was not treated well, and there was um, not a lot of support for him. He didn't get a lot of education. Um, didn't have an opportunity to go to school. That was one of the areas of neglect a in his life. So Kenny's had a, a very difficult life. All of the children in this family have had tremendous challenges thrown at them. But Kenny stands out because, well, for one thing, because of his leg, so, um, which was something that, you know, that was part of his, almost part of his entire life. Um, and that hindered him from being able to, uh, to basically have a normal childhood. Um, he was constantly having to guard the legs. So that was an issue that was there and everybody was aware of. So it kind of made him a target for bullying and all sorts of things. There were things that I would read in the case file that I just had to stop because I was like, I can't um, believe this. I know that he was not allowed to go to school. He was told that he wasn't good enough, he wasn't smart enough, and he was going to stay home and he was going to take care of the other kiddos. Um, I know there were times that he would be at the foster home and he would ask for um, NyQuil because that's what his mom used to give him to make him go to sleep. So for him, that was just normal. I know that she, last time I worked with her, um, she still did not think that what she did was wrong. And she had made no changes in her life. Um, so it was very hard to work with her knowing what she did and how all of her kids just wanted her to admit that she had done wrong by them. Um, and she wasn't willing to apologize for any of it. When he came into foster care, um, those things, you know, he was starting to get um, the opportunities that he hadn't had before. and But he had a lot of catching up to do. And he had a lot of upheaval while he was in foster care. He didn't have a stable home that he was connected with. And he was in and out of um, foster homes, potential adoptive placements that failed, which broke his heart. Um, and then, uh, and then group homes, which, well, they're institutions. Uh, even even the best of them, where they try to be real warm, they're still not a family. Struggle. It was a big, huge struggle. That I was the only one that didn't get adopted or be put in a family. All the ones that did want me kind of like turned me back in and be like, I can't handle them or not the one for me or something. So, yeah, it was a struggle. Going in and out of treatment centers all my life has definitely not helped. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what a family actually means to me. Watching my family grow, not being there again, that's, I feel like the black sheep because I was not there. Just being times not being with my family when they were all gathered up was probably the most 
I guess, horrifying for me. And not being able to see them and constantly going to treatment center, to treatment center, to group home, to group home, is not being able to see them or having to wait to talk to them or, yeah. That was a struggle. When I met Kenny for the first time, he, of course, was a little standoffish because he didn't quite understand. And then when I explained to him and I told him I would be with him as long as he needed me and was in foster care and explained the things that I would be doing, like making sure that he was getting the schooling, making sure he was getting the physical things that he needed and making sure that he was someplace where he was being cared for properly. And then he really responded. And then we got the stories. <laughs> I got his some of his backstory stories because it was we built trust really fast. You don't often do that. But I think he was just so desperate for somebody to care that he responded to me. And he tested me. <laughs> several times just to see if I was going to stick or if I was going to cut and run. And I stuck. <laughs> Joan Creek is Kenny's casa. And we couldn't have made a better match. Um, it just, it's amazing. We knew Joan was amazing. Um, she's a former teacher. Um, she's just got a tremendous uh, can-do attitude and a great heart for kids. Um, but when we had to present her with a case that had 10 kids, you know, th that's pretty extreme. And was she gonna be able to take that was one of our my concerns. So we decided to divide up the cases among a couple of the CASAs and we let her choose um, the one she was going to focus on, and she selected the older kids. And in that group uh, was Kenny. And uh, so she became Kenny's um, advocate right off the bat. Ah, uh, Joan, I love Joan. Um, we were kind of, I wouldn't say good cop, bad cop, but I felt like I was like the mother figure and I'm the one who laid down the laws and had to make sure all the things, all the T's were crossed and I's were dotted. And then she got to be grandma and she got to do all the fun stuff. I know she was very supportive. If Kenny called me and said, I'm having a rough time, can you come? I would call Joan immediately and say, can you come with me? And she was like, yep, let's go. Oh, Joan. You can't say that name and see her face and not just go, wow. I would say Joan and I share the same heart for these kids. Uh, we love them. Joan is um, a mixture of the grandmother and the fairy godmother and Xena, the warrior, running into rescue. She's all of those people. She was stable. I mean, she was present. She was there. She was always someone that Kenny could turn to if he needed something. And it didn't matter whether he was in uh, Chaudair or whether maybe something had happened and he was in trouble. She was there for him, hearing him, loving him, caring for him, and, um, and, and, and just being there with wisdom and grace. Joan Creek, she's like a grandma to me. I mean, she was someone who was always there I could call day, night, no matter what time it was, no matter where I was. Joan has been there my entire life. She's never given up on me. She's always told me that you're doing really well. There are some things you do got to work on. I'm going to be here with you. I'm 22 and she's still here for me. I love Joan so much. fighting with the neighbor's dogs. <laughs> oh yeah, so we usually have people 
ask us if they can come and see the wallabies. And so we would tell them, like, if we saw it, um, we would come up and say, yeah, we actually do have wallabies. If you walk up over here on the side, stand up there, you can see them from the backyard. I'm heading out, but you guys are more than willing to do that. My dad thought it would be a good opportunity to, for me to meet girls, but I guess I'm too shy to talk to people, so. One of the biggest challenges um, with Kenny was, sorry, finding that forever family for him. He was always farther away than all of his other siblings. So making sure that um, I could keep that connection and I could let him feel like that big brother that he so wanted to be. Lots of rejection. A lot of rejection and finally ending up, you know, in treatment centers and group homes that didn't work. It was, oh, I can't even remember how many different places he's been and how many group homes he's been in. Gosh, it's gotta be at least, at least a half dozen. He has had a long winding path uh, towards adoption. One of the things he's always wanted to have happen was to be part of a family. He just has this tremendous sense. Um, he wants to be connected. He wants to have a family to come home to. He wants to be able to give to his, his siblings and have that uh, reciprocated. So when I, Kenny told me that he was going to be adopted by Brad, I was over the moon. I'm so grateful to Brad. Kenny said when he was down here, he said, you know, finally, I'm going to be in a family. So important. Doesn't matter if you're 10 or 20 or 30, you need that family connection. And he's got it now. Yay, Kenny. It was just the next step. These kids love each other. There is a bond between these kids. Very strong bond. And, uh, it was just the next step to realize, hey, these guys need to be brought in. So Kenny wasn't adopted. Michael currently was not adopted. I said, let's just bring the family together. I already know them. I already love them. I care about them. They're, they were, I consider them my kids already. Uh, I just want to make it official for them that they know, hey, you have rights to this place. This is home. It's not just, eh, you can stay here in like an apartment. No, this is home. that Kenny's adoption, um, well, one thing it signifies for everybody out there. No kid's forgotten, no kid is too far gone. I think it's a message to the world that we shouldn't give up on people um, and that we can embrace people and bring them into our lives and bring them into our family and even make it a formal connection. I think the most important thing it means is that he finally belongs and is being accepted for who, exactly who he is. No frills, just I am Kenny. The things I'm looking forward most to coming here in, in two months and getting adopted is, well, I'll actually have a family that I can call home. Um, well, I'll be in this room, so it's pretty cool. Families back together. You got know, like losing, like if you were out on a ship somewhere and had a wreck and all the family got all separated, and then a few years later, you find them again, and they're okay. Yeah, it's it's like the shipwreck in life is like, do we have everybody? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. It's just like finding them and saying, okay, guys, let's pull it all together. We're home. For Kenny, I mean, it's the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. It's giving him the gift uh, of what we're born into, a family. You can't discount the significance of it. Um, it's a life-changing event.
Oh, my hopes for Kenny in the future have been have never changed. I, I want him to be responsible. I want him to be happy. I want him to work hard and do well. I want him to have a family of his own, make a fabulous father. I hope he just follows his dreams and every day realizes and knows how special he is and how he can persevere and get any any dream that he wants. So if that's going to school or, um, you know, getting married and having kids, um, that he has the capability of having all of those things and whatever he wants, he has the capabilities of reaching those goals. This leg of the story, I think it should be a lesson for people that no matter where you come from, you always have the will to do what you want. Anything's possible when you put your mind to it. My hopes for Kenny are huge. I mean, really. Um, I see so much growth in him since he has been with Brad and just having that, that strong foundation for him. I think the sky's the limit. I don't think that we know how far he can go. I think he's a world changer, and I think that uh, as long as he has a secure base, I think that he is going to surprise all of us with what he is capable of doing. But I think it'll be about helping others. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it will be, some way of really making a difference and helping others. I just want him to continue to know that there are a lot of people out there that care and give him, I want him to get the confidence that, yeah, by golly, because he still, he still needs that. He needs to know that people care about him. And he's well on his way. Finding out where I'm headed now Looking for a sign of disaster So I can make it there faster I'm weighing the consequences out I'm going to be changing my name to Ken Box Elenda which Elendil is from the Lord of the Rings, so yeah, it's an Elvish language, or I guess an Elvish last name, so that's awesome.